Wow, what's happening folks? It is me, Randy PG, and as always, we're more official than a ref with a whistle. And today we are joined by our very, very special guest. Uh, I was trying to think of something that rhymed with Mendez. What rhymes with Mendez? Um, I don't know. Mm. Vendez. 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 I don't know. Kelly Mendez! <laughs> now, Thank you uh, for having me. Thank you for being on the show, Rated PG. And for those who don't know, the show is not Rated PG, not even a little bit. And do you have any shows coming up for this month? Well, I'm going to be um, at Cigar Village on jokes. Smoke some jokes with you tomorrow. Yes. And then on the 29th, I am going to be in Mableton. And what are you doing in Mableton? I am telling jokes, uh, and the show is Gringo Landia. Is that American land? Yes. <laughs> or Gringo? Yes, wait, yes. wait, what is it again? Gringo Landia. Yeah, I don't think that's Landia. I think that was racist of me to say. <laughs> Landio, you know, the Lando. Uh, what time does that show start? It starts at 9 o'clock and it is um, at um, Sabora's, which is a delicious um, Puerto Rican restaurant you said in Mableton. And if you check my Facebook page, Kelly Mendez. Mm -hmm. I will be posting this flyer in the next uh, couple of weeks, right before the show. Well, and how do you spell your name? Because I know there's Kelly's like that are spelled. Well, Kelly is spelled the right way. <laughs> Which is? With a Y. Not an E-Y. No, or an I, or, you know, one L. Right, right, right. And I think she's taking a shot at my name because it's Pierre with one R. No, the I'm not. The way it's supposed to be spelled. <laughs> no, no, it's because I was in like fourth or fifth grade with five other Kellys and they all spelled oh. their names differently. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Did they give you like a nickname or some kind of adjective in front of your Kelly? No. Because they do that to kids. I mean, guys, like, you know, when I was a kid, there was a guy named David and there was another kid named David. Yeah. And one of them was really big, so they called him Big David. And then Lil David, they just called him David, and Big David just felt the type of way about it. He beat up Lil David. And then they were both just David at that point. Well, yeah, because that's setting them up for some kind of complex. I would love to do that. Like, what's your name, Pierre? Oh, there's Lil Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Skinny Pierre. Or Skinny. I'm like, all right. You no, know. you just be Big Pierre. You're right. Big Pierre. Uh, I'm big now. Um, but I have, what's today? Thursday. Tonight I will be at Mont. Cello at 8.30, then tomorrow, Smokes and Jokes, East Atlanta Village, the show starts at 8.30, ran by Ty Dixon, boom, 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 uh, 16th, I'm at the, that's Father's Day, I will be at the Laughing Skull Lounge, best up show at 2 p.m., then Monday, the 17th, I will be at the Laughing Skull again, then, Dang, we got more shows, yeah, you go, Pierre, then the 21st, I have a house show, I don't know anything about that one, then, 29th, I am headlining the Feed Me Funny show at uh, North Village. If you guys want tickets to that, just let me know. And then on the 30th, I am at some place on the Beltline. It's called Walkie Talking Comedy Show, ran by Catherine Blanford. And 7.30, if you guys would like any more info, please go to my website, PierreGuyton.com. Boom, 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 boom. Now, Kelly. Pierre. How long have you been a comedian, man? Um, I have been using comedy as a survival skill mm -hmm. probably most of my life, but I have been um, doing stand-up officially for a little over a year, maybe 13 months, going on 14 months. It's like a baby. He's 14 months old. Yeah, but a babe in the woods. <laughs> okay, okay. But y'all all could be my children. I believe it. I believe it. Uh, what's it called? How uh, how has it been going for doing that? Like, what was your first time you ever did it? Like, remember the place you went to? Yes, I remember the very first open mic I did, which was at Urban Grind, mm -hmm. and AK is was the host and wrote a really good five minutes. I mean, my timing was off. I made him chuckle a couple of times. Hey, hey, that's a comedian. Don't really laugh at much. Well, yeah, yeah. And then another comic got up and basically called me an old cougar pussy. <laughs> and I knew right then that hell yeah, I'm home. Like, that's you know, where I belong. I, that's a compliment because I've been called much worse than a uh, cougar pussy. You know, it, 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 I got mad because it was an old cougar pussy. Why you gotta call me old, bro? <laughs> like, well, you know, that's <laughs> me off the old. Kedar just said this too. He said he was at the gas station and somebody was like, "Hey, unk, 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 let me get your attention." He said, "I just had to keep walking. I will not accept it. I am not getting old." And I was like, "Eh, 
Somebody called me old timer the other day too. I was like, "Fuck, you see my hairline? <laughs> You've seen it." So yeah, I, if somebody called me unk, I'm like nephew. <laughs> you know, yeah. I embrace it. Yeah, right. You accept who you are. Well, yeah. I was gonna ask, how did your first set go? Since uh, you know, I how did it go? Do you think personally? Um, I felt like it it was good material. I, I recognized that my timing was shit mm -hmm. for sure, but I think that. For the first time, I, it was structured. You know, I just right. didn't write down like I had these ideas and then you know expanded on them and then put them because I knew it was five minutes. And right. What did I know early on how long five fucking minutes is when you're it's doing stand up? At first. Yeah. Oh man, like I just remember the first time I said five minutes, I slick had like a little panic attack because you're up there, you're like, hey guys, silence. You're like, oh, I'm gonna eat this dick. It hurt. It's gonna be terrible. Um, what was I about to say? I forgot the question. The next question, anyway, uh, how has doing comedy like changed you from the time you did it like a year ago to now? Has your perspective of what is funny adapted to like your comedy now? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, a lot of lot of decisions, a lot of learning, um, paying attention, listening to myself, um, but also not judging myself for being in the moment, the process, yeah. and being willing to go on stage knowing that it sucks or knowing <laughs> that you know I don't know this material very well and mm -hmm. I think I'm just at the point where I can get in those situations and kind of you know navigate my way out of them instead of just awkward silence or I'll stand there let it happen to me <laughs> well some, I mean it's part of it sometimes mm -hmm. you got I mean if you were great all the time I mean just think you everybody'd just... be an asshole because they'd be like Oh, here you he know. goes. <laughs> and plus, it's not it's not worth it if you don't have to fucking work for it. You did know? you like uh, what's what was the word I'm trying to call? It? Like, did you study comedy? Like, you know, because like, some people are like you know I've, I watch a lot of stand up. You know, I've been doing wanted to be a comedian since I was in high school. You know, blah blah blah. I was like, oh, that's cool. But did you like study comedy or like watch a bunch of stand ups and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I've I've always um, loved comedy. I mean, from an early Who's age, stand up. Um, like the first stand-up comic that I ever saw was George Carlin. Like in person or just? No, oh, I was eight on, you know, <laughs> staying up too late, you mm -hmm. know, illegally watching HBO because cable just came out. And yeah, and that was the first stand-up comedian and that I never seen. it at eight? Yeah, it clicked with me. It, it, <laughs> like, well, you know, it was, like I said, I've been using comedy as, as a survival mechanism, you know, for a not so great childhood. So mm -hmm. it was comforting because Despite everything else, I could still laugh. And right. I, I'm getting all sappy about that shit. But no, it was George Carlin, and you know he was very much talking about what was going on in America at that time. Mm -hmm. And I watched a lot of news as a kid. I read a lot, so so I guess maybe that's why it clicked. And plus, you know, he George cussed. Carlin. He cussed in all the dirty words. Like somebody was telling me, uh, uh, I don't know about them. He's a but when he was growing up, like every, all his parents said, they used to go together and watch like stand up and stuff like that uh, but it would be like kind of like how people get together and watch basketball games or like NBA fights or something like NBA fights boxing matches or something right. like that and he said he would just sneak around the corner and crack his door open and then just like listen in to it like it was like watching porn for his ears and I was like oh, yeah. I don't know my parents they I don't know my mom been cussing since I can remember you know so it was never like you can't watch this movie she like just don't say none of it and I was yeah. like oh, okay cool 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 no, um, we, my, my parents swore a lot too, but we, we couldn't watch. Not that they knew. Like, I got grounded mm -hmm. because somebody let me borrow an Eddie Murphy album. And, um, I heard some similar people like that too. Yeah, and I, so I was listening to it with my headphones, and I just couldn't help but laugh out loud. Yeah, and I got busted. But what you it was worth to? it. Uh, which, is the, which is the special where he wore the, the, blue, the blue leather? Um, that wasn't blue delirious. Blue or purple or whatever. I don't remember. Red was delirious. Um, wait, you sure it was Eddie Murphy in blue? He wore purple was, one time. Okay. I don't know. That one I don't remember, and I'm going to get chastised by the black It's, one, it's a bit so. about doo-doo on the stick, and he's going to put it on you. <laughs> and he's going to put it on you? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, do you have any favorite local comedians? I do, I do. Um, there are so many talented comics, funny people in Atlanta, and I'm grateful too because that's that that's helping me become better as as well. But my favorite comedy kit is Sham Wilkins, but I think everybody knows that. <laughs> everybody knows that me and Shamari. Um, she called him his government Shamari. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
And I think he's super funny, and I think a lot of our damage is similar. The way that we view the world, our brains work Sham similarly. Sham is what I call unapologetically black in front of white people. He's his self. He knows who he is. It is. And it's true, and I appreciate that. I appreciate real people. Mm-hmm. So, just Sham? No, not just Sham. <laughs> she like... There's so many, but Shamari. <laughs> well, I just had to mention that one first. No, mm. I think that um, I really enjoy Katie Hughes a lot. She makes me laugh. Oh, I almost mm. peed one time watching her, so I think she's hilarious. Um, you're putting me on the spot here, man. There's I mean, so many saying. funny people. Because um, if you were to ask me, because you know I they would don't say like it when you tell them. Kelly Mendez. Oh, you're sweet. I would say Dedrick Flynn. Oh, Dedrick is hilarious. I would say William Childress. I say Anthony Trafford. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> they're in my top ten as well. Mm -hmm, you just forgot to name them. No, I Sham just Sham just I, shined so bright <laughs> that there was no other light. <laughs> well, you know it. No, <laughs> it's my favorite comedy kid. I can't help. It. Uh, what's your method for developing material? Um, it's kind of madness, really. No, mm. it's um. Like, I'll start with an idea or a thought, something that struck me funny or weird, mm -hmm. and just jot it down, and then just kind of, just try to build something out of it, you know? And then once I have a premise and then maybe an outline of a joke, you know, I'm all the time rearranging how I'm saying it, you know, different words or structuring it differently. So that's that's where I start. Um, well, let me ask you like another question. Like, if you were to describe your comedy as a cocktail, what would it be? I think mine's would be like a, a Four Horsemen. Okay. Is that the one with the four J drinks? Like Jack, Jameson. No, it's like Jack, it's Jose. It's all whiz Oh, you're mixing tequila with it's whiskey It's everything in with it? a J in it. There's like four of them. You're trying to kill somebody. It's, a, it's like a Four it. Horsemen. I am here for death. I am here to murder this five minutes. You are going to wake up tomorrow hurting. And that's what I want. I want you to pee yourself a little bit. When I'm on stage, like I want you to be next to somebody on your date and that you laugh so hard. That is the ultimate compliment to your comedy, right? So it's like, and then somebody like farts it. a little bit. Like, uh, I want that to happen. Like, I want you to be on the date first. Like, oh my God, it's got <laughs> And then you just stare at each other. That's how you know if the relationship's going to work out. <laughs> like, I want, mm -hmm. I want to test those boundaries. Okay. Um, what was one of your most memorable performances that you did? Good performances. Um, I think, and it was recently, mm -hmm. I, I got to do um, a lightning round at Cabbage Patch. I've never been there. Uh, Milltown Arms, uh, the, the show that Joseph Highsmith does once a month. Mm -hmm. And and that was that was the best I felt delivering comedy. So, you remember what you were talking about? Yeah. If you I don't want to. Well, no, it's okay because I think, it, you know, most people know that I'm talking about big titty energy. <laughs> so, so that's part I, of it. This is the first time I've heard that. Um, well, you need to pay attention. <laughs> well, you get to hear it tomorrow, man. Will do. Uh, but I, I'm, I've been working well. It's a joke about micro penises and blowjobs. <laughs> and it landed with a room full of uh, non comics, and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. You just reminded me, I should write this down. I'm not going to. I had this joke, and I was like, I think men with little dicks get shamed for no reason. And I think we should just. <laughs> no. I don't have one. I'm just saying, I think that. You need to just revamp how you look at it, because men with little dicks get the best head. <laughs> like, you get the best well, head. You, I'm not going to tell you the punch, because that's kind of where it goes, but yeah. They, they get, you, they, there's nothing that they can't get. <laughs> you know, when you, that's like when they're being disrespectful, they're still talking. They're like, you okay? Yeah, I got your whole dick in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but dudes with burn. bigger dicks, I don't know. I was like, I don't know why y'all like to struggle. Acting like you can fit that whole thing in there, you know you can't. <laughs> Like, it's like, I can do it. Um, but no, that was off topic. It was. You had to bring big dicks up because I was talking about micro penises. I get it. I, you need, I, it's not right to make fun of somebody. There's nothing they can do about it. It's not well, right. It, it, the, but in the context of the joke, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. granted, it does, it does women shut are people down, but it comes back around, and then I'm mean to women later on. If You know, so I'm a, you know. You're, it's, it's very mean. It's very human. Wait, look, we it's said really it. about Brian Kemp. If you want is to know it? the truth. So, <laughs> I may or may not be inferring that. He, anyway. I see what you did Come there. see me tomorrow did and you, smoke some did jokes you even see and what you, the rest of it. Did you even see what you did there? You said, Brian Kemp, you said it may or may not. Like, mayor. 
No, I didn't mean to do I that. To, but it just—I I just thought it was. Funny. If he was I, mayor, that would have. That'd be mayor even funny. may not. That know. would be even even funnier. And yeah. You know. See, write that down. Now, what was your most memorable bomb? Oh, most of them have happened <laughs> at um, 420 Comedy, Saturday afternoon at Very 529 good. in East Atlanta Village. You said most of them? Yeah, yeah, but I love that room. I've done, I've eaten a dick on that stage <laughs> more than any other Comedian, stage. Probably. Yeah, but I've done really well there as well, and mm. you know, it's just a happy What's the crowd home. like? It varies, and it's a roller coaster ride sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's a fun atmosphere, and you enjoy yourself, and you might have one or two people that aren't comics in the audience and then sometimes it's all right. comics mm -hmm. and sometimes um, every all the energy gets sucked out of the room and even the next 10 comics can't bring it back and it's just really weird and awkward. Did you do that So it's a roller time? coaster ride. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> What's that, like what happened during your bomb? Like do you know why or it was just like... Just um... Just, you know, just fucking around, just... Before I was really, I couldn't, I finally committed to some material. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, I was consistently telling a lot of jokes, but I never committed to anything. Right, you were just kind of like, so, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, well, I wanted you to go into elaborate detail about your bomb, but it seems like you don't want to... Well, let me think about it. Let me think about it. I bombed. Well, I, I felt like I bombed um, that night at um, You've Got Time. But I wouldn't consider it, but well, I was... They didn't I was, boo you. You no, didn't get booed off stage. They, no, I didn't. I, I got booed. Let him. Like, I, yelled at that, <laughs> I yelled at that one dude because he started clapping. Right. I was like, I got booed off that stage. That wasn't even my worst one. You ever been to The Strand? Yeah. I went to, yes, I did shitty there too, where I just stumbled over oh the words. Oh my God, and, But the worst one, I think, is, I can't remember where it was, but I just could not remember anything. I mean, you know, and it was just like... But I recognized that, so I just got off stage. And like, you should use your old time. And I'm like, no, the fuck you shouldn't. And, uh, you know. Well, I mean, you do you. you yeah. Do you, but. Kedar was telling me, oh, my God. Uh, one of his worst bobs. He said he went to, he, he was on BET and stuff like that at the time. He said, so I was feeling myself. I'm just like, what? I went to this club. It was packed out. And I went to my homegirl. She went to the DJ and said, yo, my homie's a comedian. He's been on BT or whatever. So the DJ was like, yo, I'll give you some time on stage. <laughs> and he said, I was drunk. Like, did not even think about performing today. And I was like, I bet. And he was like, you want me to say anything before you come up? Say, you know, my name's Keto. I'm on BT. No. I'm on TV. You know, I've been all over <laughs> traveling, you know. He said, boy, when I got on that stage, they cut the music off. <laughs> and <laughs> he said, I don't even remember what I said. I was talking about my dad and like how he likes to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And like he used peanut butter first. And sometimes, you know, you should use jelly first, right? Because he said, when I tell you, I <laughs> he said, the of consciousness. First he said the first, like, I, I don't even know how long I was up there. Couldn't even have been a minute and a half. He said, but I heard the DJ start cutting the music back up. <laughs> and I was like, all right, y'all, that's my time. Y'all be good. Well, that could be a blessing, you know. So somebody else just makes that decision. Oh, you, you man. Can. And then <laughs> my worst bomb was at the Strand. I was super high. I had, like, three shots. Uh, Keith Vance was hosting. Uh, I walked out on stage, said, you know, hello. No one said anything, and I was like, all right. And I went to go sit down, and I noticed, like, my hand was shaking, like, really bad. And I was like, well, my name is Pierre. Um, I'm not French. Okay. <laughs> oh, I just, got so, I just started sweating, and I felt the sweat coming down, and I was just talking. I looked at my fiance, and she was looking at me like, she just, like, looked down, and I was like, oh, I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well. And I just continued to not do well. And then I got the light, and I was like, thank God. Um, all right, guys, uh, that's my time. Make some noise for your host, Keith Vance. And everybody started clapping. Keith wasn't in the room. Ooh. He was, like, downstairs and outside smoking. So they were. I just had to stand there holding the mic, and I was like, well, you guys want to hear some more jokes? And somebody was like, no. <laughs> like, all right. You gotta wait in silence. <laughs> and then Keith comes, like, I, it's so silent. I can hear him walking up the stairs. 
That's awesome, though. Mm -hmm. And then he comes in the room, <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, Mrs. Lundy, you guys are right. And they're like clapping. I literally was just sweating. I could, oh, it was just bad. And Keith was like, bro, you okay? And I was like, no. No, I'm not. And I had him the mic, and I walked off. I went outside, lit a cigarette, and I'm just like, and my, like two of my friends in there, too, like that never really seen me do stand up. And they were like, dog. And I was like, yeah, that was bad. And they were like, that was terrible. And I was like, yeah, I know. And then Keith comes down there, and he was like, what happened? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. And he was like, look, come, goes and shake my hand. He was like, don't let this stop you from doing stand up. I want you to keep trying, bro. And I was like, I'm not going to quit. It wasn't that bad. He shook my hand like I was a pastor. He was like, he was a pastor. like, God loves you, son. Ah. It's going to be all right, brother. Like the two hand handshake. Yeah. But, you know, I actually didn't do stand up again until I went back to the Strand and did better. Okay. Oh, God. I, did, I lost sleep that night. Oh, I waited three hours to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think every time I've, I've done terribly, yeah, I go through that too, where it just, you, you play it over and over in your head and how you, anyway. I do that with my good sets too. Yeah. But it just feels so much worse. Uh, yeah. Oh man, like people pay for that. <laughs> I have not ex experienced that yet, but I'm sure. What, people like paying it. for you to bomb? No, well, people paying for me to do comedy, so. I will tell you this. But a babe in the woods, remember? Yeah, I will tell you this. People who pay to go to comedy clubs are way more receptive to comedy. Oh, sure, yeah. Like, they don't want you to do bad. Yeah. Like, they actually want you to be really funny. I've been learning that. Like, all these shows I go to, like, Tyler Chronicles, he was one of the creative writers for Wild and Out, the show on MTV. I've had him on here, and he was like, whatever you do a show, doesn't matter if there's three people, doesn't matter if there's 3,000, do the best you can do. Mm -hmm. Like, you believe everything you say. It ain't even got to be funny. Yeah. Just you talk about something you believe in with all your heart. Sure, yeah. They're going to respond to that because they believe in something with all their heart. Maybe a little stupid. Yeah. And I, he was like, like, what are you afraid of here? I said, birds. He said, what? I said, I'm terrified of birds. He was like, why? I said, I don't know. I've known a lot of people that are afraid of birds. They, they just look soulless to me. And I oh. feel like they'll attack me at any point. Crows, and maybe. Ravens. Or, ravens are very smart. Bruh. Okay, this ain't even got nothing to do with nothing. This is another reason why I don't like birds. I, I walked to work the other day. I was walking to work. And it was a beautiful day. Kind of like today. And I was like, oh shit, it's a fucking beautiful day. Looked up. Birds are chirping. And shit. I was like, what up, birds? And I saw something fall from the sky. I'm like, what is it? It was shit. And I literally saw it. I jumped out of the way and it hit me on my apron when I was going to work. Mm. And then it bounced off. And I was like, fuck these birds. You know, I'm making this Facebook post. I'm all pissed off. I get to work, the parking lot. See co I'm like, wah, what up? He was like, wah, what up? And then I saw something on the ground kind of moving real funny. I look a lot when I was walking. I got a little closer. It was a baby bird. And I was like, oh. It was, it was, it was, no, no, no. It was hot as shit outside. And I was like, yo, little man's ain't going to make it. Because he was like trying to fly. I couldn't yeah. do it. And I was like, ah, I know if you touch a bird with your bare hands, like, you know, the other birds won't come near it. So I didn't know what to do. So I kept walking. And then something inside my spirit was like, yeah, and I was like, ah, damn it. So I like had some paper plates. It was like some trash outside. I was about to go like scoop the bird yeah. and put it in the shade. Right when I got near the bird, I saw a big shadow fly over my head. And I just literally, I ducked like this. And when I looked up, it was a hawk. And the hawk just goes, grabs the bird and just starts flying out. I was like, oh. And I literally just stood there with my hands out like this. And I was like, maybe the hawk. That was his baby. Mm -mm. And the hawk's going to like raise dinner. it to be a baby. It it's going to be a little hawk. And then lay it on top of a light post. And I see it just go like this, like drop the bird. And I see like the bird like going over. And he was like looking at it like this. And I was like, oh, it's going to be okay. And I just see its talon just go like. And I just see feathers start flying. I was like, oh. And I saw shit dropping off the light post. Circle of life, man. I saw the whole circle of life in one day. Traumatic. Traumatic. I'm sorry, that was traumatic. That didn't help your fear of birds any, did it? No, it just made me like Mother Nature is scary. Now I really don't fuck with birds. Did you know that eagles eat goats? Eagles eat goats? Goats. No, I did not know like, that. Mountain goats that are in the mountains. And I was like, I know what goats are, Pierre. Uh, but I, see a, I saw a video of an eagle. Uh, goats. Yes, they fly towards the goats like when they're running and jumping and stuff like up the mountains. And then they'll grab them with their talons and then just like yank yeah. them off the mountain and they'll tumble down and like break their necks and then they'll eat the Smart goats. birds, those eagles. Or they'll, Good for them. They mm -hmm. almost went extinct. They, they, they I've seen a picture, uh, well, a video of an eagle just literally claw a That's goat crazy. and then fly just <laughs> with a goat. Just <laughs> like, can you imagine you're just, It's got to be a baby goat, right? I can no, see no, no, with a baby goat. No, it's a full. But not a full bird. Yes. How big was that eagle? Uh, wingspan was like nine feet. Holy shit. Eagles are huge, if you didn't know. 
And I was like, oh yeah, I don't fuck with Mother Nature at all. Not even a little bit. Imagine you just sitting there asleep. You know what I'm saying? And then, <laughs> well, an eagle could probably pick me up. And probably. They're, they, uh, I'm a little bit heavier. I think I'll be fine. I they, might, they might do some damage, but yeah, I don't think they could pick me up and fly away with me. Bro, they'll drag you. If anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, you'll just be sitting there like, no, and you're just like, ugh. <laughs> Look, if I can't get away from that, then anyway, I deserve to be their dinner, I think. <laughs> uh, how did you recover from your bomb? Oh, we're just jumping back in. How did I recover from my bomb? Um, I don't know that I <laughs> take bombing as like, like a wound that has to heal. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, one of the benefits of being a late bloomer in comedy is that I really just don't give a fuck. And I, under, and I understand that, you know, not doing well and bombing is part of the process, you know. Just trying to learn. Certainly, I don't want to go and bomb every time. Right. And, and uh, you know, but, but it's, you know, if, like you said, just do your best. And But sometimes I know that I've delivered it well and the audience isn't into it. I think that that's, that kind of gets in my head. And like, cause, you know, sometimes people just don't get your jokes or whatever. But as far as just like fucking up your material and not being able to mm. recover and stuff like that. Um, I just try not to do it, man. Plug Chapman said the same. He goes, the best advice I can give you is to learn to just not give a fuck. He said, when you learn to not give a fuck and then not give even more of a fuck. It's freeing, man. Oh, man. It's very He said, you could do a show for 20,000 people. <laughs> you don't give a fuck. And just whatever and though and when I stay and can maintain an attitude like that mm -hmm. it is it is it is better my comedy is better I do believe that too that'll be dope we got about three minutes left okay um what is something that you learned from doing stand-up that you wish somebody would have told you when you started hmm kind of like that not give a fuck thing well but well that comes with life my friend yeah. um I think I had that anyway <laughs> Well, I think I had to have it just to finally do it. Would you Maybe. give a fuck if you found one? Maybe. It depends. <laughs> I just, you know, I only have enough time left for so many more fucks to give. So All I right. think I'm going to be a little bit more choosy. Um, but back, what was the question? What was, uh, the, what was the best? Uh, what's something you oh, learned? Oh, something I learned. That you wish somebody would have told you? Uh... I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure because a lot of people just like if you pay attention, mm -hmm. you can learn. Um, but I'm hard headed, so I don't think it would have mattered if someone told you something. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But early on, somebody told me, and I guess I just took this to heart. Was you know, if you're really gonna do this, then you need to be honest and don't apologize. Yeah, yeah. Unapologetically. Black. That's what I was saying about Sham. Just like, and then there's Christian Davis. Oh God, he's unapologetically offensive, and I love it. Did you hear? He's his? Christian, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a one of his funniest things is the sour cream joke. He doesn't say it anymore, I don't think. I don't know that I've heard the sour cream. Well, joke. he's like, uh, what's it called? People are flavors, like ethnicity wise, and he was like, like black people are, and everyone's like chocolate, and he was like, right. He's like, Indian people are just Indian food. Chinese people are just Chinese food. Mexicans are tacos. I don't know. And he was like, and what are white people? He was like, say it with me now. Sour cream. That's funny. That's funny. I died the first. He did it that's in a, a nice room. Mis that's a nice misdirect. But I can see how some people's buttholes would get itchy. It, but I love be it. All right. It's honest. It's, it's, like, like, it's, okay. it's a joke. Yeah. It's a joke. He's like, yeah, we don't sour cream. It's just like there, you know. It's <laughs> kind of true. It, it, it's kind of true. Um, what would we call? And the last question: Any advice you want to give to anybody about doing stand-up or doing anything that they would like to do with themselves? Well, try to learn how not to give a fuck. Um, mm -hmm. No, but I guess best advice would be um, just just apply yourself, work hard. You don't know? try, do. Right, right, and 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 don't think that it's just this easy thing to do. It, it requires effort and it takes work. It's a lot of fucking fun, mm -hmm. so it makes all the work worth it. But uh, yeah, so just fucking do your work, man. And I tell people too, uh, if you want to do stand up. Uh, I don't know if it's anything that you love. Like, I know a lot of photographers and, like, DJs mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But if you really love something and this is what you really want to do, uh, you're going to have to do it for a long time and for free. Sure. For a very long time. Um, but like, And then you can charge a ridiculous amount of money for it later on. Will Smith said that. And I was like, that's brilliant. Well, yeah. He was like, like, I love dancing. I love singing. I love music. He goes, I've been singing, dancing, jumping around. 
20 something years now. Sure, yeah. He goes, and now I can time. charge millions of dollars to do it. Do what I want. I like the rock is the same way. Like Jesus Christ. He was like, don't try it, do it. Yeah. He was like, you know, I can't tell you how many times I said I'm going to try and do this and didn't do it. And how dope is that? Look what he built off of a professional wrestling career. Just off charisma, pretty much. Oh, yeah, like, just, yeah, yeah. Just not stopping. And there's this another rapper named Nipsey Hussle. I talk about him all yeah. the time. Um, what is it called? He was like, I forgot what I was going with that. Damn it. But no, Nipsey Hussle, he uh, was like, you know, a big advocate of do your best, surround yourself with positive energy. And he was like, for example, if you surround yourself with people who inspire you, then there's nothing that you can't do. And he was like, so imagine if you looked around and you got 10 people in your circle and not one of them inspires you to be better. And he was like, that's not a circle, that's a cage. And I was like, damn. He goes, but imagine you got 10 people in your circle, one of them's an entrepreneur, one of them's a professional yeah. musician, one of them owns their own business, this one over here owns their own this, that, and the third. And he was like, can you, you, you would be a fool to just sit there and not want to improve yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And I was like, I fuck with that. So I like to surround myself with comedians and other people who actually care about doing comedy and care about being better. Not necessarily even care about getting laughs, but just being better at being uh, doing stand-up comedy. The I, art of comedy. Yeah. The art of stand-up. I'm just now learning about it. I'm not going to lie. I, I have fun. That's what I tell people. Like, you know, I don't I'm care. I'm having a ball, too, I'm man. having a blast, even when I'm trash on stage. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I laugh at myself. I think when you're, this is, I tell people this, too. If you're bombing, don't act like you're not bombing. Lean into it. <laughs> right, just fucking give in to it. Just, like, if you know you're about to get punched, close your eyes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, all right, here it comes. Um, but, yeah, I tell everybody that don't try to do, do your best, fuck the rest, and uh, everything else that's going to happen next is going to be Hell blast. yeah. You know what I'm Hell saying? Yeah. But uh, folks, we're about to get out of here. You want to run your shows by us one more time? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Tomorrow, Friday, Cigar Village, East Atlanta Village. Jokes and Smokes. 8.30. 8.30. Yes, times are important. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know I'm new. I don't ever remember. And then June 29th over in Mableton at Saboras mm -hmm. at Gringolandia. What Look, time? It is at... <laughs> <laughs> Again, what time? 9 o'clock. It's at 9 o'clock. Right. We come early for dinner and wonderful drinks. Will do. Uh, you guys, you can catch me again on uh, my YouTube page, Rated PG, here my website, PierreGuyton.com. And as always, folks, I'll be black. That's all white with you. It's all white with me. She's going to be white here all day, folks. <laughs> and uh, au revoir. Bye, guys. Arrivederci. Shalom. Ciao. Auf Wiedersehen. Das uh, Namaste. Like, namaste right here. Bye.